I just bought five pallets of customer return liquidation merchandise and there was a big mishap and I'm gonna tell you about that and a couple other things as well on the other side of the break. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, this is John. Welcome back to the channel. Quickly, for those of you who've never seen my videos before, I'm a full-time eBay reseller and I make these videos to try to help you guys succeed and learn from my mistakes and my experiences and the things that I deal with uh, on eBay and other platforms on a daily basis. So real quick, if you like this type of video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you're notified when I go live or make another video. So lots going on here. I was gone for the weekend and I don't know how your sales have been. Mine were absolutely trash. I gotta tell you, uh, it's almost like eBay knew I was gonna be gone for the weekend. I left uh, to go to Southern California to visit uh, my family and to hang out with my friends a little bit. And uh, I was gone from Friday until Sunday night. And I did list one item on Friday. I had one item that I had drafted and, and listed on Friday. And I did some stuff on my account Saturday and on Sunday just to kind of keep eBay happy. And I found that uh, I only had $250 in sales Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And I even came back on Monday. Uh, Sunday night really did my shipping. Monday, I went in and did my listings and things were back to normal for the most part. And I didn't find any success Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And today I wake up, do my listings, and I had an $850 day. So go figure. It's really weird. I, I kind of think that eBay um, sees your activity, they give it a day or two, and then they sort of grade you for your performance. And they, they either reward you or they punish you based on what you've recently been doing. And uh, I don't know, it's just really weird. So I'm gonna get up tomorrow and do what I did today and just hope that I can keep riding that, uh, that success. It all boils down to what you're selling, but I really think that the momentum you create by listing consistently does make a huge difference on where you're ranked. Like, like I said before, eBay can lead these customers to your product. They can lead the horse to water per se. Uh, they can't make them buy your item. That's where you come in and create a great listing and have great prices and great photos and all that, great titles. But at least eBay is giving me the exposure that I need when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So just something you can take and maybe apply to what you're doing. So back to what I was talking about initially, and that is Monday, I had to go and pick up five pallets that I purchased last week. And so I had an appointment to go pick up these pallets and I kind of staggered my appointment. I had a, an appointment scheduled for 10.30 in the morning and then another appointment scheduled for 1.30 to pick up two pallets at 10.30 and three pallets at 1.30. Reason is I didn't have the space of my vehicles to handle five pallets. It just wasn't gonna happen. And I was able to really get a good deal on these five pallets, something I couldn't pass up. So we sort of made an afternoon of it or a late morning afternoon of it where we went down there and we arrived. Now this is one of the pallets that I actually had uh, taken a, a picture of and I think I showed it to you on a previous video. It was one of those, it's like a mystery box. It basically said it had appliances in it. Um, you know, it was from a seller who was undervaluing their their lots. I was taking a risk at three, I think at 360 is what I paid after everything is said and done. And I was excited to do an unboxing video for you guys. Well, I arrived there, they bring it out, okay? And right off the bat, it was this, the width of the crate or the pallet. And I knew I was gonna get it in within the actual box itself in my vehicle. I have an SUV and it just was gonna barely fit, but it wasn't gonna fit very well. So we went ahead and we recorded, and as you're seeing right now, you recorded the uh, unboxing per se uh, of what I was going to get. 
as you can see, it's not small electronics or appliances as it was as it stated in the listing. And what they didn't show, they took three pictures of this box, but what they didn't show, there's two sides of this box that says outdoor, lawn, and uh, garden. And it's like, and they're big letters. I would, you know, if you would have taken the photo, one of the three photos in that listing, I would have seen that and I would have steered clear. I mean, there is garden gnomes, there's broken stuff. And it, uh, I can tell you definitely not something that if it was labeled in the listing as lawn, garden, and outdoors, it certainly would have would not have gone for $360. That's just kind of the way outdoor stuff works. It doesn't really sell too well in liquidation. So what I did was I told the person that uh, was bringing out the pallets that this isn't going to work for me. This here is um, not what I ordered. And maybe it's quite possible that you brought me the wrong box, but it's also possible that you mislabeled the listing and had I known it was outdoors, as it says on the outside of the box, I certainly would not have uh, bought this. And so I'm not going to take this. And initially they said, well, you need to take it with you. Go online, file a claim. I said, I've done that. I had that happen before. I had a, a situation. I think I talked about that a few weeks ago where I bought a pallet, took it home, and it was full of salvage stuff. And I'm not going to do that again. You guys used to allow us to check these items before we took it off the premises. Uh, I'm pointing it out to you right now. This is not what I ordered. And uh, we need to talk to someone here. So he said to send a text. I sent a text to his supervisor who was inside. Uh, they had me take the, the number off the side of the box. I sent him the photos. Sent him the photo of the side of the box where it said lawn, garden, outdoors. And uh, they said, hey, we mislabeled this. We're going to come and take it. Awesome, right? Because I didn't want to get stuck with that. I knew that was a loss if they tried to pull that. But I stood my ground and they came and took it. So they brought the other pallet. We started loading that in. And uh, the guy came out to pick this one up. And he brought another pallet out. Now, so I thought I had three pallets at 130. I thought, well, they're just bringing one of those out. And uh, I only have to worry about picking up two pallets later in the afternoon. And it was similar to the, the type of stuff that I had ordered on the other four pallets. So I didn't think anything of it. Uh, loaded it all up, took it back to the house, came back in time for my 1.30 appointment. And uh, I got there and they bring the first pallet out. And they said, hey, the, the supervisor comes out and says, hey, we made a mistake. I said, well, what do you mean you made a mistake? when we brought that second pallet out, we gave you someone else's pallet. And so they said, we need you to go back home and get it. Now, mind you, I'd mixed it in with the other items. This is a non-manifested pallet. So I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do that. I mean, they gave me a picture of, of the listing and what it looked like, but I mean, you got stuff that's stacked upon stuff. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to, to determine what was in that pallet. And he said, well, we could do this. Instead of giving you a refund on that box, that outdoor box, this is about the same price uh, as far as what it sold for. We'll let it go as a wash. And we'll just take care of the, the person that who had originally bought it and figure out what to do for them. And I said, okay, fine. Uh, because it's the same type of merchandise I was buying for the other few pallets. So I did get five pallets, but it was a screw up after screw up. I told him, look, I will accept this pallet in place of the one that was outdoors under one condition. And that is the guy who brought this out, who made the mistake, he was totally cool. Please do not take it out on him. Do not uh, penalize him or whatever you do, because there's a few employees that work here that do a great job and are very personable. This is one of them. And I'd hate to see something happen to that person. And he promised me that, you know, it's definitely not that kind of a situation. He took the the blame, the supervisor took the blame. And so I was cool with that. And uh, that's kind of how it worked out. And I've got a full garage now and I got a lot of stuff, um, just getting to work, working hard. And I'm hoping for more $850 days. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of important to have the right sort of merchandise that you are comfortable selling, that you know sells, 
And uh, right now I'm happy. And hopefully we can kind of keep that merchandise uh, rolling in. It was good I had a chance to speak to that supervisor. It's always important to network when you're a reseller. And to be able to speak to supervisors, they kind of give you insider information. Um, they tell you certain things that you normally wouldn't know if you didn't have that conversation. And so I was able to get some uh, some good information that is gonna help me source better with that particular liquidator. Um, but I've noticed that in these pallets and also in the pallet that uh, really looked like salvage a few weeks ago, um, these are Amazon returns pallets. And I'm noticing on these high ticket returns, you're getting a lot more swap outs from uh, Amazon buyers than, than ever before. Yeah, you do get some perfectly fine returns, but it's more like 50-50 now. I mean, you get an item that's maybe parted out or missing pieces or missing accessories. It's like they buy the item, they take their trashy one and they take the new one and they swap them and then they open a return and send back the one that they've had for a couple of years, it's all dirty. And you know, while a lot of times it still works, it's nowhere near new, you have to sell it as used, you have to test it, clean it, it's a, it's a hot mess sometimes and it's just getting worse. And I was talking to Archie the other day and uh, or actually uh, last night and we were talking about this, how it's almost like because people will do what they're allowed to do. So if Amazon is allowing their customer to just return stuff at will, not even really checking the returns, people are gonna catch on to that. They're gonna do it and it's gonna get worse like it has been, but it doesn't happen like that on eBay because you get a lot more pushback from the sellers. They're not allowing these returns to go unscathed and they're calling customers out on uh, their behavior and it doesn't work on eBay the way it works on Amazon. And I think that's why those of us who buy Amazon liquidation pallets are sort of seeing this trend, whereas it's still bad on eBay, but nowhere near as bad as I'm seeing it on these liquidation pallets. So let me know down below what you guys think about that, uh, my story about my liquidation uh, mishap, or if you've noticed a an uptick in uh, faulty returns if you buy liquidation pallets. It doesn't have to be Amazon per se. It could be other companies as well. It's good to sort of know what companies are getting worse versus what companies are sort of staying the same because maybe they have a stricter return policy. Um, you know, it does affect all of us who sell liquidation pallets because, you know, that pallet that may have a, an MSRP of say $5,000 it really isn't $5,000 if these items are, half of them are swap outs. So the good thing about the type of item, the items that I'm buying is you can part a lot of this stuff out. People are hunting for parts. Um, you can do that and you can still make a pretty good profit on these kind of things. So that's what I'm comfortable doing. I'll hit a home run once in a while. Um, I'll have a lot of items to part out, test, clean. I'm not listing 50 items a day. That's not my formula for success. I am listing 10 plus quality items a day. And I know that if I do my part, I'm consistent. I'm gonna have $800 days. I'm gonna have $300 days. I had the same conversation with Archie and I said, look, if you realize that all you have to do after your eBay fees, after your shipping, right? And after your cost of goods is average $200 a day in net revenue, that's your, that's your profit. And that's before taxes, but I mean, you don't count how much you, you earn after taking taxes out when you tell people what you make a year. So if you calculate $200 in net revenue or profit every day, 365 days, it's like $75,000 or something like that. And then you take your 25% out for taxes, roughly, give or take, depending on your situation. And you're looking at $54,000, roughly, based on just that profit. Now, a lot of people would think, hey, that's a heck of a, a good job. Maybe where you live, it's decent. 
Maybe it's not so hot in other parts of the country, but I gotta tell you that certainly beats minimum wage and it certainly beats working for some someone nine to five, being told what to do, begging for vacation. So it just gives you an idea of something that uh, maybe you need to consider. It's not so much, in my opinion, of how many items you list. Certainly, if that model works for you and you're making that $200 plus a day, uh, go with it, right? But I don't care if it's just one item you have to list per day. If you're hitting that mark, you're gonna make a pretty good, uh, decent amount. The key is consistency. And as I showed you, my lack of consistency last week sort of bit me in the butt, but I'm back on track. And, uh, you know, I'm going to power through this summer, slow down. I know it's going to come, but I have items that I'm keying on that are um, big ticket items, in-demand items, more need than want items. And that's kind of what you have to do if you want to get through these slow months and if you want to succeed and you want to hit that model. So again, you can list 100 items a day, 200 items a day if you're capable of doing that. And it's going to work out for you. I'm sure of it. But you can also list a lot less of that. And just, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to be like this YouTuber or if you have to be like that YouTuber. I'm getting out of that mode. I mean, I kind of fell into that trap. I'm gonna do what works for me. You need to do what works for you. This guy who's telling you how great of a job he's doing, you know what? He's doing what works for him. And I'm not, never gonna knock people for doing that. But I think a lot of times it just sort of creates this false sense of you have to be like him in order to succeed on eBay, and you certainly don't. You just gotta tinker with what you like, what things you have available to you, what sources you have available to you. Find the items within those sources that can make you the money you need to make and go for it. And it's not easy, flipping ain't easy, but you need to do what you gotta do to make this work for you because you don't wanna go back to that nine to five have to answer that boss with an attitude. We've all been there. Um, it's possible to do this on your own, but you gotta be disciplined and you gotta be consistent. And if you do those things, you will build a great account, trust me. So again, what do you guys think? Put the comments down below. Got a lot of comments on the video that I did over the weekend. And for those of you who haven't watched it yet, I will put it right here if you're on your mobile device. It's regarding the Senate bill 936, S936, it's the Informed Consumers Act, that it's a bipartisan bill where Congress is trying to mandate eBay and other reselling sites um, to really sort of expose the sellers and make us provide personal information in our listings and, uh, and that's if we are considered a high volume seller, which, um, you know, really isn't much at all. We're talking a couple thousand dollars in sales per year. And that's a lot of us. And I know I don't want my personal information out there. I know a lot of the comments that were in that video, um, you guys said the same, but I need your help. We all need to, to come together and go and check out ebaymainstreet.com, and I'll put it here down below, ebaymainstreet.com, all right? Scroll down a little bit where it says blog and find where it says Informed Consumers Act. Click on that and it'll ask for your name and email address and it'll actually send a form letter on your behalf to your, your senator in your state and go ahead and fill out that form. That will send your senator that email. I already received a reply back from my state senator uh, for what I did on Saturday because I did that on Saturday. And of course, you don't get a very personalized reply back from them. But if enough of us go in and bring this to our senators, our state senator's attention through this eBay website, you know what? Maybe they'll get the message that you know, there's a lot of people out there who care uh, about this and don't wanna see this happen. And again, watch the video, wait till this one's done by the way, but watch the video uh, that I put out on Saturday and it'll sort of explain uh, more in detail as to exactly what Congress wants to do to us resellers. So that's all I have today again. Um, hit that like button, please do that for me. 
Um, for those of you who have not yet subscribed, there's about 70% of you right now watching this video, and thank you for watching this far through the video that haven't subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button. And I wanna thank all of you who have subscribed. I think we're over 7,000 subs right now. It's awesome. It's amazing to me that 7,000 of you really take the time out of your day. You could be doing other things, but you're either watching or listening to these videos and I'm honored and I'm, I'm certainly amazed. I never thought that I'd do this well on YouTube, but it's not so much of what I've done, it's what you guys have done. You're a great community and I'm just honored to be able to provide this content for you. Um, but please hit that notification bell so that you can be notified and, you know, when I go live. And we'll be doing some live here pretty soon and we're gonna be doing some other fun things. So I want you to be notified of that when it happens, so please, hit that bell so that uh, you're the first one to know. So guys, I don't care how you source, uh, what happens, you're gonna run into miscues, you're gonna have good days and bad days. Be consistent with what you do on eBay. Um, let's strive to get 200 plus dollars and maybe your goal is even higher than that. Maybe it's three, $400 a day in profits, maybe five, six, maybe it's $1,000 a day. But if you are consistent, you find what works for you. Regardless of what your goals are financially to make this work as a viable option, this whole reselling business, um, just know that flipping ain't easy and we are gonna see you guys here probably on Friday, but have a great rest of your week.